Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. It's a series where I talk about champions in League of Legends that rarely see much play in both solo queue and pro play, and for today's episode, we're going to talk about Kale, one of the most annoying top laners in the entire game, let's be real here. <laughs> but back to a more serious note, Kale is a ranged magic damage marksman and mage hybrid with a subpar early game and a very powerful late game, and while she's always performed above average, having a win rate usually anywhere between 52-55%, to 55%, that's usually because Kale's one of those champions where people usually play her once or twice and then they give up on her, but the ones who stick with her can take her very far. So for everyone who's stumbling upon this video, especially the Kale mains, I'd like to welcome you and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, let me clarify something really quick. The series Why No One Plays is not meant to hate on champions and it's not my intention to discourage or slander anyone who plays them. The point behind these videos is to just discuss possible reasons from a gameplay or game design perspective as to why they might not see as much representation compared to the more popular ones. So after you're done watching this video, I'd like to hear what you have to say, especially if you've played Kale extensively, whether you agree or disagree. Some of the champions I talk about in this series may actually see a rise in popularity, especially since Preseason 11 has completely overhauled the item system. So who knows? In fact, as of right now, Kale sits alongside Poppy in the top 5 highest win rates in top lane by huge margins. Even so, just because she might be having a bit of a good moment right now, that doesn't erase the years of history that she has or kind of lack thereof. So if you find this video enjoyable, then please be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and share this with your friends. After you're done watching this episode, check out my other League videos if you're interested, and if you want to support my channel, consider donating through PayPal or Patreon, it'd be very much appreciated. But for now, let's just get started. Kale is one of those pocket pick top laners that players mostly use as a niche counter pick. In fact, top lane has the most amount of these pocket picks, usually having very polarizing matchup spreads, where some lanes they absolutely tear through, and others where they get absolutely destroyed. For example, aside from Poppy and Kale, we have Quinn, Gangplank, Teemo, Vayne to some extent, Singed, and Dr. Mundo. Most of these champions are unpopular to play because they have pretty rogue playstyles. Technically, Kale is one of the more traditional champions even before she was reworked. She doesn't really have any super different gimmick like Skarner's Spires, Malawi's Tentacles, or anything like that. For all intents and purposes, she's one of the most normal champions we have on the list. And while she isn't as obscure as those champions, she's still looked at as one of those pocket picks because of the way she plays and the way she scales. Kale belongs to the specialist role, usually where champions are thrown into when they don't fit in a specific class archetype, and we actually see some of the pocket picks I mentioned earlier are in here, like Quinn, Singed, Teemo, and Gangplank. These champions have divergent playstyles and properties from other classes and subclasses, but usually excel in area control or being very high priority targets with an inherent challenge of situational awareness. If you take a look, most of these champions can be very destructive if they position well and get the right setup. Kennen and Fiddlesticks have ultimates that can single-handedly win a fight. Azir and Heimerdinger can solo carry 5v5s if they put their soldier or turrets in the right spots, so on and so forth. Where Kale falls into this is not exactly very clear. At the present moment, she's doing very well thanks to the new items, but the main reasons behind her inconsistent play rate stem from a missing sense of direction with her abilities. Bringing us to point number one. She lacks a specific function, or more specifically, her kit lacks an identity. When designing a champion, you need to first define what playstyle they're supposed to have. Are they an assassin? Are they a mage? Are they a tank? Are they a support? Marksman? And then you have to go into a niche within that niche. Are they a poke or battle mage? Are they a hit and run or a stealth assassin? Are they a 1v1 duelist or an explosive teamfighter? You can take any champion and match this criteria, even among those very specialists who are conventionally regarded as champions who don't fit into any subclass. Cho'Gath is a tank first and foremost, and his specialty is disruption. He's all about breaking enemy tempo and catching someone out. Teemo is a mage. His specialty is guerrilla warfare and area control. Nidalee is an assassin, and her specialty is execution, waiting for low health targets before going in for the kill. True to her nature as a huntress. Kale, on the other hand, is she a mage? Is she a marksman? Is she an attacker? Is she an enchanter? Does she focus on area control? Does she focus on singling out an easy target? With no clear identity to associate this champion with, it doesn't matter how strong she is, players cannot easily form an attachment. Everyone, whether they're aware of it or not, subconsciously resonates with the class. Some people are just naturally drawn towards mages, others are drawn towards supports, some enjoy the thrill of silent assassination, while others want to be the badass kicking names and taking ass. That's also the reason why some of the most popular champions have low win rates, because it's not so much about how strong they are, but rather what purpose they serve, what role they fill. Kale's passive is Divine Ascent. Anytime she levels her ultimate, she gains bonus stats. At base level, she gets bonus attack speed with each attack and bonus movement speed after 5 stacks. At level 6, she becomes a ranged champion, permanently being able to auto-attack from a distance. 
At level 11, her attacks release Shockwave, set deal bonus magic damage, and at level 16, she permanently receives the bonus attack speed and movement speed while also getting more range. By looking at this ability, you can tell she's a very scaling intensive champion. Her fighting capability is permanently augmented every 5 levels, so naturally whoever plays Kale has a goal to hunker down and draw games out as long as possible in order to reach her maximum effectiveness. Radiant Blast is a straight line skill shot that deals damage, it slows enemies struck and breaks their resistances for a period of time. Conventional damaging attack you see on anyone else's Q, and the breaking property makes sense given her hybrid damage. Her Q also allows her to slow down escaping targets given that she has to be in range to auto-attack them, or alternatively she can use it to bog down pursuers when running away. Good ability all around. Celestial Blessing heals her and one other ally and gives them bonus movement speed. We see the same heal on Seraphine and Yumi, but because Kale naturally builds ability power, her movement speed bonuses ramp up a ton to the point where at late game, she can amp someone up by over 80% for 2 seconds. Starfire Spellblade empowers her auto attacks to deal bonus damage, but on activation, she can deal bonus missing health damage to targets. Then finally, Divine Judgment allows her to make a target invincible from any and all damage and effects, while then raining magic damage on anyone close to the invincible champion. During this time, Kale can't auto attack or use any skills for a second and a half, but the total invincibility duration can go up to 3 seconds at max level. Not only does her passive scale immensely into the late game, but so do each of her individual attacks. Her Q doesn't have the highest ratios, but the slow ramps up to 50% for 2 seconds at max level. That's a big number, and not very common for a slow of that intensity to last as long as it does. Additionally, percent resistance reduction naturally scales very well, because as champions start getting higher base stats and buy defensive items, the 15% armor and magic resist break helps you deal more damage, relatively speaking of course. Celestial Blessing scaling doesn't really fall into the healing, but the higher movement speed. The faster you move, the better it is for you overall, especially in the late game. Starfire Spellblade scales well because she gets bonus on hit damage and her percent missing health damage increases too. And her ultimate goes from 2.5 minute cooldown to 80 seconds, and it goes from 2 seconds long to 3 seconds. And yes, 3 seconds means a lot. Just for reference, Morgana's Q binds you for 3 seconds, and if you've ever been hit by one without any tenacity, you would know exactly how long that feels. Every single ability on Kale scales very well because each one has some property that goes up besides just the damage. Some of you might be asking right now where her kit lacks an identity. She can slow people to attack them more or run away, she can heal people to move closer to people, and one of her attacks is an empowered auto attack. It's not so much her individual abilities, so much as it is just combining them all together. Kale doesn't really seem to have a set purpose in how she's supposed to be attacking. If anything, it just feels like she's a magic damage dealer who has supportive tools. And that has sort of led her to have a bit of an identity crisis since her rework, because at one point she was to build full AD, sometimes standard on hit, or even full AP and not just attack, just spam Q and heal. And in some cases, you took her into the bot lane as support. Right now she's sort of back to normal magic damage on hit, but it doesn't feel very clear as to how you should play her. One might say that's a good thing because that means it opens up room for adapting your build based on whatever you might need. But while she can mix up her items, the problems that she faces with her playstyle don't really change that much anyway. The reason why champions like Shaco and Shivana can decide if they want to go attack damage or ability power is not because of their hybrid ratios or anything like that, but because their kit can still do the same sort of job with just the damage coming from different abilities. For example, Shivana's on-hit bonus from her E combined with her Q striking twice allows for an on-hit build, but if she wants to go AP, it can empower the raw burst damage from her dragon's missile and ultimate. Shaco's E scales well on both ability power and attack damage, but he can decide if he wants to have a huge amount of front-loaded burst on his auto attacks in Q, or if he wants to simply use his clone in boxes to act as more of an area control mage. Kale simply does not have that option because the primary focus of her kit is to auto attack, with the rest of her abilities only serving to either make it easier for her to auto attack or protect herself. Because she's this weird mixture of mage DPS support, there's no real clear purpose for her to serve. And since players don't know what she should normally be doing, it can discourage them from playing her because she's just not straightforward to learn. Problem number two is that she's a late game champion in a game that increasingly favors early game, which is an even bigger deal with the new mythic items. I did touch on this a lot in why no one plays Kog'Maw, Nasus, and Anivia, but this is also a really big issue for Kale. I don't mean to imply that late game champions cannot survive in this meta, there are still a bunch but usually their ability to scale lies in their activity, not so much in their passives. Cassidy and Jinx, for example, may take time to become those absolute death machines once they reach level 16 and have 4-6 items, but during that time they can still participate in teamfights or maybe punish enemy mispositioning for a solo kill. Not to mention they play in the mid and bot lane, so their presence around the map is more relevant. Kale, on the other hand, is principally a top laner, notorious for being an island. 
She has a lot of really bad matchups in the top lane champions that can completely neutralize her and push her out of the game before she even has a chance to scale, but she doesn't have many winning matchups either. Obviously a level 18 Kale will beat pretty much anyone in the game, but even if in concept she does win against champions like let's say Vladimir, Garen, Gangplank or the like, none of those are necessarily plus 2 hard win matchups, only like plus 1. More often than not, the enemy laner has to royally screw up to lose to Kale early game since her lack of engage makes it difficult to initiate a fight. Now to her credit she is very good at surviving in lane. If she reaches level 6 and isn't too far behind, there's almost no way you can kill her under tower anymore. But the best defense is a strong offense. Kale cannot easily force the victory in lane, limiting her chances of scaling faster into the late game. Not only that, but if she loses lane, it's going to be hell on earth to mount a comeback, especially in higher elo where snowballs almost always lead to a victory and throws are increasingly less common. Playing a late game champion carries an inherent risk that you could lose the game before you have the chance to carry your team. And since Kale has to spend the first 10 to 20 minutes trying not to die and just get her levels up, that leads to inconsistent results. In a perfect world, you could ask your team to just play passive and let you farm up and start one-shotting everyone, but obviously that won't happen because either your team will just not listen to you, or the enemy team will capitalize on the fact that everyone on your team is playing passive to secure objectives and such. She has the same issue as Nasus, where too many factors are in play that, if gone wrong, negate any chance you have to scale. Riot has made changes to her kit to allow her some agency in the early game, such as removing the mana cost on Starfire Spellblade, along with shifting the balance of power on her passive to not make her as useless prior to level 11, but even so, she is still quite weak before then. Sure, the items may have helped boost her win rate, but she's not the only champion to have benefited from this. There are tons of champions who got indirectly buffed to extreme levels thanks to the new build options. The third and final difficulty Kale faces as a champion is that she's very team reliant, not in the same way as Anivia and Kogma, mind you. She's more than able to look after herself, but playing Kale means that you have to trust that your team can hold the line long enough for you to get to where you want to be since prior to 20 minutes, you're basically half a champion. Ordinarily, that's not cause for concern. A lot of late game champions make it work like Vagar, Kassadin, and most of the AD carries, but remember, just like Nasus, Kale is a top lane champion, the one lane that's all about having to look after yourself. The reason why top lane consists of either skirmishers, lane bullies, or tanks is because those are the only types of champions that can survive in the top lane. Kale is good at keeping herself alive, but the rest comes down to how well her teammates can survive. This makes her an inconsistent champion and an undesirable pick. If you combine this with her unorthodox playstyle of being a magic damage AD carry who has supportive skills, the deck is automatically stacked against you. Much of her gameplay prior to level 6, even prior to level 11, is to interact with the enemy laner as little as possible and maybe hope that they're stupid enough to whiff their abilities to where you could just auto attack for free. It's not only an inconsistent playstyle, but to many players, it's not a very fun one. However, for those who do have the patience to go through the more unpleasant parts of her kit, they get rewarded handsomely with a champion that is almost unstoppable in the late game. But of course, as gamers are, very few are willing to deal with those inconveniences, and that's usually why no one plays Kale. So what do you guys think? Do you think I exaggerated her shortcomings a little bit and didn't bring to light her strengths enough, or do you think I was right on the target with my assessment of her? Even though her play rate has inflated a bit during preseason, I think that's just mostly because people are using her since she's strong right now in flavor of the month. I doubt that many people would really remain loyal to her once the meta shifts again, but maybe I'm wrong, who knows. Thanks to everyone who made it all the way to the end of the video, hope it was worth your time. Just remember, this isn't a champion hate video, it's purely meant for discussion. I'd like to know in the comment section what you think Riot should do to make her more fun to play. I'm actually curious, because I have no idea how to fix this champion so that she has a similar clear-cut identity like Morgana does. Anyway, if you'd like to support my channel, best way you can do so is like the video, comment down below, share this with your friends, subscribe for future uploads, and check out my Discord server if you'd like to talk about more League content. Also, if you still have time and would like to keep watching, I have a playlist of all the why no one plays videos and why everyone plays videos, so perhaps if you feel like binge-watching, you should check out my other episodes. Lastly, if you want to, consider donating to my channel either through PayPal or Patreon, it would mean a lot to me. Patrons get to vote and even request for future videos, so if you have a particular champion you'd like me to talk about, then maybe check it out. Links are all down below, but for now, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.